In this video, we are going to define the integrating factor for first order linear equations and talk about where it comes from. Um, because we don't want to just always use things the way they are. Sometimes methods are outside the scope of the course, meaning we need to know more to be able to figure out why it exists. Um, but in this case, we actually can handle this. All right, so I'm going to use the form here and I'll try to talk through it as slowly as I can and try to keep you with me. Um, so here is the first order linear general equation. Right, so we're just working in in general here. All right, um, we want to multiply both sides by something that is going to um, create a product rule. We're wanting to force that to happen. Okay, so skip these paragraphs. Let's jump right here. So if we take the left hand side, that's this side, and I multiply it by, we don't know what this mu is. We're just saying, hey, we want to figure out. Is there a number I can use, an expression I can use? That way, when I multiply the left-hand side by that, I'm forcing a product rule. So what's happening here is we took mu and multiplied it by the left-hand side. So notice it was just distributing to here and here. That's all that is. Now, we are forcing this. We want that to happen. I want the product rule of y and mu, whatever mu is, we're trying to figure out what would mu be then. I want it to be... The product rule between the two. So I know that we're going to force this. So we want that. So we're going to force the highlighted part to be equal to the product rule. Now, according to the product rule, though, if I just use the product rule and I work it out, this is just definition, right? I get that. Well, they are both, if they're both equal to, let me highlight, this and that are the exact same thing, right? And if those are equal because they're the same thing, then my highlighted portions have to be equal. Remember, the first one we forced to happen. We multiplied by mu, and we said we want it to be the product rule. The bottom one is just using the definition of a product rule. Now, since those are true, then are equal to the product rule, then we know those two equations are equal. So this line is those two highlighted parts together. Now, taking those two highlighted parts, if you notice the green portion, those are exactly the same. So we can subtract them out, leading us down here. <clears throat> I got u of x times p of x equals d mu dx. All right, so we're just going to rewrite it real quick to be a mu. Nothing's changed. All right, all we did is got we got rid of these green portions here. That's all we did. We got rid of those. Now we're left with that. Then we rewrote it, and we just dropped that of x. That's okay. We can write it that way. Um, and notice this is separable now. So I can actually times both sides by dx. That's where this came from. And then we multi divide both sides by mu. So here to here is just separable. All right, we did that. And then now we take the integral. Okay, we don't know what p of x is, so we leave it alone. But I do know what the integral of 1 over mu is. It's ln of u. All right, if I were solving for both sides, I would take both sides to the e power, which would leave me with a mu. But then I have that whole left side taken to the e power. It does provide a plus or minus because of the absolute value. But we, we can use either one. We can use a plus or a minus. Both of them will work. Um, out of simplicity, why would we not use the positive? So the integrating factor ends up being right here. Are you going to ever have to derive that for me? No, I don't think I'll ever ask that on a test. Um, but is it good to know where it comes from? Yes. Um, it just helps us mathematically. It matures our brain to understand a proof. This is a proof of where what the integra integrating factor is. Um, please read through it. Please try to understand it. You will mature your math brain a little more if you do so. I know that sounds silly, but it is a thing. 